What's up, everybody? I'm Alex from Comic Book Historians. Go ahead and click on that silky smooth subscribe button down below. Today, we're celebrating our 50th docuseries episode. <laughs> Talking about and celebrating the one and only Jack Kirby. One concept he would always come back to was space gods coming from outer space to our planet and being involved with us in some sort of extraterrestrial and almost biblical way. These were mentioned in three continuing storylines that Jack Kirby worked on that he actually intended as a magnificent three-part trilogy. That is Thor that he worked on in the 1960s with Stan Lee. 1970s, he worked on the New Gods. And then in 1980s, he worked on Captain Victory. A lot of people don't realize that this was was a three company crossover of one magnificent cosmic storyline that I call the Star God Trilogy. Now, Thor is a story of the Norse gods, the main character of Thunder and War that Jack Kirby did actually go back to several times during his childhood as a hobby, in the 1940s with DC, in the 1950s with DC, and finally in the 1960s with Marvel when he co-created the Thor we know with Stan Lee. But there was a time in the later part of that decade when Jack wanted to progress the story through Ragnarok into a second generation of gods. This was shown in Thor 127 of 128, 1966, which depicted the Ragnarok of the Norse gods, where all good things had to come to a cataclysmic end. In the battle to end all things, Thor and Loki die in a battle to the death, a great upheaval brings about the end of Asgard, and the birth of a new civilization, a golden age. These next gods were a fusion of gods with technology. And we don't see any more of this period as it is very likely that Stan Lee and Martin Goodman had no incentive to shake up a money-making book. Which brings us to 1967. Around this time, Jack Kirby felt that he had co-created or created so many concepts for Marvel, why not create a little something for himself? And so he started creating designs for the new gods. These images were printed in 1971 Jack Kirby portfolio in black and white and in color at the Jack Kirby Collector 26, 1999. Now, as we saw in the Comics Implosion episode, Jack Kirby was fired from DC Comics in the late 50s by editor Jack Schiff over royalty disputes from the Sky Masters newspaper strip. So he was basically blackballed from DC Comics. However, Jack Schiff left DC Comics in 1967. Carmine Infantino came in. Mort Weising who was an ally of Jack Schiff, left in 1970. So now the doors were open for Jack Kirby to return to DC Comics from Marvel, where he was actually having some growing frustrations over his lack of additional income from the success of the characters he helped create. We see here in Not Brand Ech 11, 1968, in some panels drawn by John Verparten and written by Roy Thomas, that Jack slayed for his wage at Marvel creating stories. Specifically, look at the note in the back of the top right panel, which also states that all was forgiven for Jack over at DC Comics by Carmine and that he was welcome back. So fast forward to 1970, Jack Kirby was living now in Thousand Oaks, California, instead of New York area, in order to improve air conditions for his daughter's asthma. And the door was open at DC, so why not bring home the new gods? In the first couple pages we see, this is essentially the continuation of Thor 128 1966, and Jack was ready to explode his ideas onto these pages with himself as both editor and writer. He was able to finally set himself free creatively and progress the Thor Ragnarok story onto the next level. In fact, some have argued that the figure with the headdress and hammer in the background is actually the Mighty Thor himself. We even see in New Gods and the Hunger Dogs graphic novel that Lonar found Thor's helmet, whom High Father referred to as an Elder God. As Jack gave us a small preview at the end of Thor 28 of New Gods with their technology, he starts off this storyline by zooming the reader into his brave new world. There are technological wonders like floating platforms, flying devices. The Odin-type figure High Father mentions that all knowledge is found in the source, and we see that one of the new gods, Metron, rides a Mobius chair through space-time. We see that the Thor-type character is named Orion, who looks like a young Luke Skywalker. He has a vendetta against New Genesis enemy planet Apocalypse, which looks oddly like the Star Wars Death Star, and he's powered by the Astro Force. So we have two references to a force, almost like in Star Wars. There's the source, and then there's also the Astro Force. And they in some way empower the new gods. There's a certain destiny with these powers. 
We also find the mastermind evil lord of Apocalypse is Darkseid, an immortal with sinister plans for both New Genesis and Earth, and that gods travel through space-time with BOOM TUBES. We also see that Orion has a side to him that carries a darkness, and that is assuaged by a handheld multi-purpose device called the Mother Box. And yes, they look like a handheld iPhone, but they're not iPhones, they're not made by Apple. They're made by Jack Kirby. We find out in New God 7, 1972, that during a larger scale war in the past, both New Genesis and Apocalypse suffered huge losses, and to solidify a treaty for a ceasefire, High Father and Darkseid exchanged sons. Darkseid took in and tortured Scott Free, Mr. Miracle. High Father took in and raised the violent Orion. Eventually, by New Gods 11, 1972, Orion helps end the life of his brother Calabac and finds out he is the son of Darkseid and his destiny is to conquer him. The New Gods story is concluded where Orion almost dies from his confrontation with Darkseid and New Genesis is blown apart. The New Gods fortress floats aimlessly through space and Apocalypse gets damaged but stays ultimately under Darkseid's control. We find out in the New Gods companion comic by Kirby Mr. Miracle that High Father's son Scott Free was raised and tortured by Granny Goodness and by escaping his childhood prison becomes the supreme escape artist premiering in his first issue in 1971. Scott Free Mr. Miracle was actually based on a young Jim Steranko, which was revealed to Steranko by Jack Kirby over dinner saying, hey, look at what you did. This was in reference to Jim Steranko's early 1960s Escape Artistry book. The imagery is clear to anyone who has seen Steranko's Escape Artist book, even without knowing the Kirby Dinner story, that Scott Free is Jim Steranko. Whether it was about him escaping from straitjackets or chains, Scott Free's love of his life, Big Barda, was actually based on 1970 Lainey Kazan, who was a plus-size heartthrob of her era. So it would be appropriate to imagine Jim Steranko and Lainey Kazan romantically together in these panels by Jack Kirby. Although Jack Kirby said that the dialogue and interactions were based between him and his wife Roz. Scott Free is confronted with two roads in Mr. Miracle 9 1972 where he must choose which path he will walk. His choice is either the path of vision, thinking and dreaming with the Romer Hymon and that of Darkseid. Now, doesn't this kind of feel familiar? Also, look at the line here by Darkseid. Doesn't that not sound like what Darth Vader said to Luke Skywalker in Empire Strikes Back? Stay, warrior. Let me complete the destruction of Scott Free so you may live with the majesty that is the power of Darkseid. Scott chooses freedom to escape Apocalypse to go to Earth, and we see so far that there are a lot of concepts that would be in the later Star Wars movie. But I don't think this is overreaching. George Lucas actually owned a comic store in Manhattan in the 1970s with his partner Ed Summers called Super Snipe. He was exposed to this stuff all the time. Even Big Bear from Forever People 4 1971 is in a sound cage, much in the same way as Chewbacca was in Empire Strikes Back. Forever People also has a character named Mark Moonrider, whose name sounds similar to Luke Skywalker. Although we had that semi-cataclysmic ending at the end of the New God Saga by Jack Kirby in Hunger Dogs, we actually have a continuation of the overall storyline in Captain Victory, notably issues 11 through 13, 1983. Issue 11 starts off with a victory, introducing the story of the final battle of the new gods, discussing the ultimate war and a giant planet of unrestrained energies with beings called ultimates, which was the same term used in the new gods. You also see Captain Victory start to lose it as he discusses his past and the planet he stems from as his face gets grotesque and he maintains his softer features and regains his composure exactly like how Orion did in New Gods. He goes into his childhood on Apocalypse, but here in this comic it's called Helicost, where he was raised and corrupted in a similar manner as Scott Free, where he is so tormented by his evil royal family that he eventually rebels and kills his way out of the planet. In doing so, he confronts his grandfather Darkseid, but here, Darkseid is named Black Mass, who in the final conflict that killed the New Gods and his son Orion, managed to stay alive as a shaded ghost using dark unholy energies, very much like Emperor Palpatine in The Last Skywalker. You see that he mentions Victory's father, Orion, who like his son, enjoyed tearing up his dark dreams. Victory escapes the destructive planet, allowing it to finally destroy itself in its new 
nuclear machinations on a hover vehicle identical to his father Orion, whom he laments never even knowing his name. It's important to see that this incredible Star Gods trilogy spans three decades. This was essentially the gods evolving, destroying themselves, and evolving again, all with Jack Kirby's very dynamic imagination, where he was able to bypass editorial edicts by actually going to a different company and continuing the same story there. It was through this that we're able to see a man who was a concept king, and that is why he, among many other reasons, is the king of comics. And if you enjoy finding out more about Jack Kirby, go to tomorrows.com. There is the Jack Kirby Collector Magazine, which has awesome content. Also, make sure to click on that silky smooth subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed the show. And remember, there's always more content on the way. (laughs) 